Hello and welcome to our today's Partner Connect session. We have um, representatives from the uh, Women's Budget Group and Frontier Economics, and we may have uh, somebody from the Economy for the Common Good as well. But let's let me not waste your time anymore. Uh, listen to me and bring our first guest up, which is who is um, Anna Johnston, who is involved in doing research for the Women's Budget Group. So, Anna, I will just grab you and bring you on stage. So you'll get a message, and so. Anna, when she's on, will be doing a little brief presentation to tell us about your organisation, how it came to be, and, and anything else you want to share, for young people particularly, to uh, grasp out what, you're, what you do. Thank you so much. See you in a minute. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you all for being here today to learn a bit more about the Women's Budget Group. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Anna and I am a research assistant at Women's Budget Group, so I work across a number of different projects and work streams. Um, so I'm going to briefly outline a bit about the organisation, why we're needed and some of our current work, and it'd be great to hear from you guys. So the Women's Budget Group is an independent network of leading academics, researchers, policy experts and campaigners. Our vision is of a caring economy, that promotes gender equality and we produce robust analysis to influence policymakers. We also work to build the knowledge and confidence of others to talk about feminist economics by offering training and creating accessible resources. So what are the issues we're trying to overcome? Well, there are a number of structural inequalities faced by women which have only amplified during the current COVID-19 pandemic. But to give some context, and this is very brief, I could go on for, for hours about it, but um, just a few kind of top line numbers. Women are more likely to be low paid and in insecure employment. So women are the majority of low paid earners, 69%. They make up 74% of those in part time employment and 59% of part time self employment. Women are also the majority of people living in poverty and female headed households are more likely to be poor. For example, 45% of lone parent households, 90% of which are women, live in poverty. Pre-COVID-19, women were also more likely to struggle with debt and paying their bills, and that's only intensified during the crisis. On average, women carry out 60% more unpaid work than men. This reduces their time for paid working, meaning they earn less, own less, and are more likely to be living in poverty. Women are also more likely to experience domestic and sexual violence. 20% of women and 4% of men have suffered sexual assault, including attempts since the age of 16. And more than one in four women will experience domestic abuse during her lifetime. So one saying that's always stayed with me in terms of feminist economics is that while policy can be gender blind, it's never gender neutral. For example, because of the different ways that men and women tend to use public services, things like social security, women were far more negatively impacted by the austerity cuts that began in 2010. So Women's Budget Group undertake research, policy work and public affairs engagement to highlight these gendered inequalities and put forward policy recommendations to raise awareness and create positive change. Excitingly, we're just about to launch um, the final report of our Commission on a Gender Equal Economy, which has seen a group of global experts from different policy areas come together to put forward a roadmap build a caring economy, which is needed in the wake of COVID-19 now more than ever. Laying out the what, the why and the how, the report is a call to action. Working together across the four nations of the UK at every level, it shows how we can design and demand a new economy, an economy which has the well-being of individuals, communities and the planet at its centre. An economy which values care, both paid and unpaid, as the activities that nurture us all. An economy which ensures that no one faces discrimination, violence or poverty, and in which no one is left or pushed behind. This new economy is a caring economy. Um, and I'll include the link to the report launch at the end, um, in case anybody was interested in joining it, it's on the 30th of September. So, um, as a young researcher, and I'm sure there are a few out there today, um, there are also ways you can get involved with our work more directly through our early career network, um, which I lead on. And I've noticed actually a few in the audience who um, have come to certain events like 
our book group and use it so soon. Um, the ECN started in 2018 for feminist researchers in academia, policymaking and the third sector to connect with their peers and with established experts to help foster the next generation of feminist economists and researchers, equipping them with the tools to influence public policy and contribute to a more gender equal economy. We hold a number of events each year, including our annual conference, which is actually coming up this November, monthly feminist economics book club, um, and ECM, ECN members have led events all over the country, written articles for us and have conducted research with us. And so I will open the floor up now for questions or for if anybody else would like to come up and have a chat. Well, thank you very much, Anna. Anna, that was a really good comprehensive view of everything that your organisation does. Plus, questions I was going to ask you about events coming up. But um, yes, please, uh, uh, people you know, on the um, floor at the moment, please have a think about any questions and put them in the Q&A um, uh, bit on the right of your screen, which you wouldn't be able to see, Anna. So I shall read them out when if they come up <laughs> and then get people up. But uh, as uh, as people are thinking through things, one of the things you touched upon it yourself, I mean, um, in terms of current situation with COVID, do you feel that's actually triggered more focus in a positive way in things like childcare and education are pretty key on people's minds, I think? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is a really um, important moment for rethinking um, yeah, the way we've currently done things and the inequalities that exist. I think childcare is such a is such a huge one that we've um, that we've been kind of campaigning for for such a long time, and the unequal kind of distribution of paid and unpaid care within the home, and how yeah. that you know how that leads to women often working, as I mentioned in my presentation, often working um, part time or more flexibly, um, in a way which therefore means that they have, they earn less, um, they own less. Their pensions are less and so it kind of it's this spiral of inequality mm. that kind of continues from that point onwards um so this is a real moment to reevaluate those things and it is really good to see that in public discourse that is actually happening you know there is a reevaluation, and there has been um ifs actually did some some research on time a time use study at the beginning of or i think it was in, in may and it did find that men were doing actually more childcare in the home and more unpaid work it was still women women were still doing more but it but it, it was changing and it was obviously leading to some wider conversations around how these things are kind of linked to traditional gender roles um, in a way that needs to change really absolutely well the, the statistics you pointed out were pretty shocking actually i was really quite taken aback with the size of those numbers and we have a couple of questions from i hope i say this right you can correct me in a second there's some really um, you have asked two questions, which are both really relevant and uh, good. So the first one is how, Anna, how do you think that women can increase their bargaining power in the workspace? Very, very pertinent. And also address the issue of exploitation since they suffer more than men. And there's another question as well about, do you feel that it's time for the world to start counting the unpaid work in economic terms? very tangible things. So Samrudi, I'm going to bring you up and you can have a think, Anna, whilst I do this. Um, excellent, there you are. And yes, I was trying to, This you were having problems, um, Samrudi, with connecting on the mic earlier. I hope that has sorted itself. Are you able to join us? You just need to click yes. <laughs> She's not sure oh, okay i can answer uh, i can answer the question yeah now if that's easier or if that helps yes i mean she, yes it'd be just nice because she i think is a, is, a, is a new visitor so always nice to see new faces but yes please continue and i'll try i'll keep trying to get her on, on, on onto the stage all right so the first question was on increasing bargaining power in the work in the work that's right yeah um so i mean i guess one really clear way of doing that is to join a union a uh, join union which has oh, i think she joined there for a second no. okay um to join um yes to join a hello hi hi nice to see where where are you somebody yes here in school no 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 i'm at home i'm from india 
Okay, oh, really lovely. Okay, great to see you. Thank you and for your yes, fantastic questions. Mm. Both really interesting questions. Um, yeah, so the first one, I think, um, to increase bargaining power. Um, union, joining a, a union or becoming a union representative in your organisation yeah. is really important. I think also that's what that's one very um, clear definitive route, I guess. I mean, we work at kind of policy level rather than at individual company level, but we work with a number of unions, we work with a number of other organisations, and I think net, informal networking and understanding the experience of other women and in other similar organisations is also really important for understanding. I mean, I guess what we do at policy level or at kind of the, the nation level is look at um, how we can do that across different spheres to then, you know, create public pressure or create kind of research or policy documents which show what's happening on the ground for women. And so I think the more you can connect with others to be able to do that in your own sphere is, is really important. I think reaching out to any national organisations or international organisations also that work on the same issues um, would be helpful. Um, yeah, I, I hope that's, I'm not sure if that's exactly the answer you were looking for, but... Um, are there local groups <laughs> where you are that you're aware of, somebody? So, uh, sorry, I, I did not get you. Could you please repeat? So, sorry, so, so, um, so I was saying about various groups that uh, they have uh, supported and, and to encourage people to have that strength to to be become a union rep or whatever. Yeah. Do, do you feel there is any similar group in where you are? Uh, so, or, yes, like I think in a country like India, of we, st uh, we have trade unions, but they do not have that much of a bargaining power. And uh, women as representatives of trade union is uh, not something that you usually get to see. It's like a very rare chance. Uh, and it is, it is actually a sad thing that even after being one of the fastest growing economies of the world and of global South Asia, you do not see women coming up or given the opportunity to be on the front foot and fighting for the wages, for the rights of working in a safe workspace. So I really feel sad about it. And I think women like us who want to go out and work and want to see the change can uh, advocate for it and work for it simultaneously. I think the strongest mm -hmm. need to take care of the weakest in the society. Yeah. My quote. Absolutely. And that second question that you had, the other side of it, is the more tangible uh, counting the, the cost in actual economic terms. Yeah. Is that something that the world will come to accept, do you think, Anna? I mean, it's, it's really... <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah, it's really, it's really one, of the, one of the bedrocks of feminist economics to try yes. and... Um, your money where your mouth is yeah exactly i mean when you look at a measure like gdp it just it does it, do, it 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 counts as externalities all these things which basically you know create not only the generation that goes into work but also future generations and and you know the whole sustenance of 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 a lively and you know um fruitful economy so there's a whole sphere of research actually, which is gaining a bit of a resurgence at the moment called um, social reproduction, which is about that exact phenomena in feminine, in economics more generally. But um, you know, the, the whole sphere of unpaid work is basically what the whole foundation of an economy rests on, and it is gaining more track. I mean, it was it was um, it came from kind of Marxism, gained a lot of ground in the 70s yeah. with, with the kind of the, the beginning of, of modern feminist economics, but is now having kind of a another wave and it's actually what our conference in November is about um uh -huh. so hopefully we'll get into the nitty-gritty of lots of these kinds of how we you know how we can address this more during the conference but yeah I mean it's it's what feminist economists economists basically are really striving for. one of the things that we're striving for is to have unpaid care recognized within economic structures and I think this with COVID-19 is a really per as we were saying earlier is a really pertinent moment to try and bring that to some kind of fruition it will be a process of course but it's already being recognized publicly I think the problem is to keep that pressure on policymakers 
to affect change because it's often feminized work spheres like whether paid or unpaid, such as education, care work, which are undervalued, whether if they're paid, they're undervalued, if they're unpaid, they're completely invisibilized. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done, but it is, it's one of the central tenets of, of the work that we're trying to do is to, to create a caring economy. That's, that would be our end goal, to create a caring economy in which paid and unpaid care are both recognized as being the central tenets of, of a well-functioning society. There's a, there's a couple of uh, questions that Sophie, and I can't get her on because I was going to bring her on as well as you, somebody, but I uh, can't find her on the system at the minute. So, but her, we need to wrap up now as well. But the question, she <laughs> makes a really good statement about why not GDP and gross domestic person. Yeah. <laughs> She's lovely. And uh, the point that you're making just there about caring is, is very much her other point is about needing to find a way to measure well-being. Yeah, absolutely. And that is, that is particularly so, so timely post pandemic because of everybody has had a number of issues, circumstances they haven't had a chance to deal with before and well-being in lots of workplaces is is high on the agenda. And Edna, I know you've had a couple of questions as well. Oh, hello. <laughs> Somebody's keen to get in. Um, and But I'm sorry, we're going to have to call it a wrap at that point, if that's all right. And maybe at the, uh, once the next week has come, up we can continue the conversation so thank you Sam samadhi is that the right way to say it by the way could you say your name please it's samriddhi thank you so samriddhi. much samriddhi. it's lovely to meet you that was lovely thank and thank you anna thank you. it was really excellent Thanks. and i've left i've really left my email address beautiful. and some information in the chat so if anybody would like to oh we'll share that please. and your event was on the 13th of september it's their 30th 30th 30th, 30th. 30th. Thank okay. You. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you. we'll move on to our next guest Thanks now. Bye-bye, Samradi. See yeah. you again soon. Bye. Bye.